Hi guys, welcome back to Settle in Spain. It is so good to be back at the house. Yay! Uh, I'm Amanda. I'm joined on this crazy journey by my husband David and our animals. We have two cats, Chewy and Impy, and a dog called Otis. This week I'll show you a little bit of what I've been doing to keep busy over at the rental house to get things ready there for winter and preserving some food. Also we have the builders in. Uh, it's been a long time waiting. I think we got the quote back in March or April time and finally they're here now in November and gave us time to actually save money to have the work done and what they're doing is the roof. So this roof obviously hasn't been touched for at least 20 years, probably longer. The old tiles are loose. Um, we're lucky there's no huge leaks. We did have a couple where one roof joins another at different angles, that kind of thing. Um, but we're making sure that it's gonna last for at least another 20 or 30 years. So what they're doing is they're taking off all of the tiles and relaying them. Now, in theory, it's a job that we could have attempted ourselves, but we're not small people, we're not young people. Getting up on that roof is not an easy task. It requires the right equipment, lots of scaffolding, all of those kind of things, but also the knowledge of how to do it. These guys are local, they're Spanish, they know what they're doing, they know these old buildings, they've worked on them for years. Uh, I don't know how they do it, but they walk across these roofs and they don't break a single tile. How? I have no idea. I know if I got up there, they'd be snapping all over the place. I've even spoken to a friend who is uh, a British builder and he was a roofer in the UK and he says he doesn't know how they do it. So <laughs> sometimes it's just better to get in the professionals and that's what we're doing. Later, I'll go through the costings with you uh, for those that are interested in uh, looking at buying a property like this. Okay, so I hope you enjoy this week's episode of our adventure. Don't forget to subscribe, click those thumbs ups, comment, and hit the bell button if you want to be notified of our next videos. I love about this garden is being able to hang my washing out. Free drying. I don't know which Otis is more fed up by, the fact that I was too sick to walk him for a weekend or that Sophie, his girlfriend, went back home. One thing that could be a chore at the rental property, I'm turning into a bonus. All those leaves that are falling off the trees there, I'm transporting across to our land. Hopefully as they break down in a little way, they will help to improve the soil. A light rain shower came as a nice surprise in early October. We hadn't had rain for months and a sleepy dog was so confused as he went outside. This still makes me giggle looking at it today.
One of the things I've learned over the years is to preserve food, making jams and chutneys and pickles. And last year I also made some tomato ketchup. This year I was gifted a huge bag of plums from a neighbor. So I made plum ketchup. I didn't video the whole process unfortunately and I used a mixture of two or three different recipes, one from a book I have and one from online. If you're interested in me sharing the different ways that we're preserving food and the different things that I'm cooking, then please let me know in the comments below and we'll certainly video more of these in the future. The ketchup turned out spicy and delicious. I also canned tomatoes. Again, I was gifted a very large amount of tomatoes over a long period of time from our neighbors, which I froze and then cooked down and canned them using the water bath method. A few days later, I was completely taken by surprise by this storm on the way back from the village of Aurea to the rental property. We had a bit of hail, extremely heavy rain, and the road, as you can see, we've got roadworks at this stage, just turned into almost a lake instantly. those who haven't seen inside the rental property before, this is the cooker. We picked it up secondhand uh, on Facebook Marketplace. It served us really well, but I just wanted to point out that you don't need a fantastic, amazing kitchen to produce really good food. This is one of my favorites. It is a pickle called Pick a Lily. It was one of my favorites as a child. And once I'd moved overseas many years ago, I needed to learn how to make this because we couldn't buy it anywhere. It is cauliflower, green beans, cucumber, and onions in the most amazing spicy sauce. And it's something that you can really only make once a year when you have green beans, cauliflower, and cucumber in season at the same time. So I make a really big batch and actually I sell these at local Christmas markets because all of us English love our piccalilli at Christmas with cheese and ham. These then are the different chutneys I've made for the markets this Christmas. Piccalilli, mango and Christmas chutney. As those of you who watched our last video know, I've not been very well lately. And this is one of my cures for when I've got a cold or some kind of virus that's going around. So first I slice and put into a jar a whole orange. Some of you will spot that I've got the chopping board on top of an electric cooker top there. That's because there is no space to put a chopping board in a very, very tiny kitchen. And we don't use this cooker, mainly because electricity is so expensive now. We use the gas one that we bought instead. I then chop and add a lemon. This is about immune boosting. It's about using those foods, the citrus, that really help us to build our immunity when we need it. Next up, it's time to peel and chop some ginger. And for those of you that weren't aware, the easiest way to peel ginger is with a teaspoon. You could at this point grate the ginger or even use dry ginger, that will work just as well. Fresh ginger will give you more of the good nutrients that your body is going to need at this point though. Next up, it's turmeric. And here I'm putting in a whole teaspoon of turmeric. I didn't have fresh, that would be better if you can get hold of it. Next, I added the honey, uh, squeezing that in there. You can't quite see it because it's off camera, 
and black pepper. Black pepper helps to activate all of the good ingredients in the turmeric. Now you could leave this there and just add hot water and turn that into a good wholesome drink to help your immune system. But I wanted to create more of it to last several days so I layered the different ingredients in a large jar until it was nearly full. And once it's full I give it all a good mash around just to get all of those ingredients fully incorporated and to start getting the juices coming out of the citrus. And with the lid on this will keep in the fridge for several days. Then you can just put a spoonful of this in a cup and add hot water or even make it in a little teapot, which is what I like to do. I did need to find something to do while I was feeling sick, so crochet for me is something when I have time on my hands and time to sit still. Otis, of course, kept me company, uh, insisting on his regular tummy rubs. <laughs> I managed to make quite a few of these squares whilst watching Netflix and getting better. I was planning on putting them together to make something like a cardigan, but the finished result I don't like, so I think they're going to have to be taken apart and maybe turned into a blanket instead. But that was all back in October. Now it's early November and we've got the builders here. And the first thing they did was to put up the scaffolding. The main guy, the boss, the jefe up top there is El Sami, a nickname from when he was a young boy. Uh, he's actually called Gregorio and comes from a nearby village. And down below is his helper or assistant, also called Gregorio. Scaffolding was up, but the materials still needed to arrive from the building yard. So the two guys got on with removing the tiles from the roof at the back. For those of you who remember, there is an area at the back that we're not keeping as a tiled roofed in room. We're going to extend the courtyard at the back there. What you can't see from this angle is there is actually a hole in that roof in the center front area. There's a rotten beam. It's obviously been a problem for some time. Sammy clearly knows how to navigate these roofs. At this stage, I was hoping that the tiles of this one roof would be in good enough condition and be able to replace all the broken ones on the rest of the roofs of the building. In the small yard that we're extending, there's also a small olive tree and it was covered in lots of olives. I managed to rescue them and pick them off the tree. They're now in the process of being cured back at the rental house. At some point in the future, in a later video, I'll share with you how they turn out. I think as you can see from this angle, this really is a very small yard that we're working in here and you'll notice there's no ladders, there's no safety equipment at all. These guys do things a different way. The tiles that come off this roof are beautiful. They're old, they're antique. Some of them may be as old as the house itself. They're handmade. I wonder if we'll have enough. No sooner had they finished taking the tiles off the roof than the delivery arrived from Al Ola, our local building yard, who did a very professional job, though my hand was a bit shaky. I was a little bit frightened by a very large lorry backing into the house. 
So there we had it, a very big pile of sand um, and we were ready to get going. It was at this point I realised that view that I video for the beginning of our YouTube videos is about to change forever. A little emotional as work got started on the roof. Day two and I was up early over at the rental leaving at about 7.30 which meant I saw a beautiful sunrise as I was heading across from where we're renting to the village of Aurea and then down to the house where the early morning sunrise hits the sun as it comes over the almond trees at this time of year. This is something we've never experienced. Because we're going between the two properties, we just haven't been there at the moments of sunset and sunrise. So it's been amazing to see the house at the different times of day. What I did next was I set up the GoPro. I went into the house onto the computer to do some work while the guys were working on the roof. Although this is now of course massively sped up, I think you can see that they were working pretty hard on that front roof section. And I'm sure you can also spot that we now have an extra man up on that roof. So while Gregorio is down below, um, sending everything up in the bucket that they need. Up on the roof is Sammy, and this time he has Alfonso with him. So we've now got three guys working on the building. I've always wanted a good excuse to put a video on of the clouds changing across the sky during the day, so this was my excuse. Though I didn't quite expect that much of a change, the guys went for lunch, uh, which is traditional here from 2 o'clock, come back at 3.30 and everything had clouded over. Soon though that front main roof is done and they start to take the scaffolding down and take it around the back to move to the roofs there. There's not much space in the back alley or small yard at the back of the property there, but the guys managed to get the scaffolding in and were soon up there working away hard. So far so good, everything was going really, really well. And then came the bad news. The builders had discovered at least two, maybe three beams that were a problem we needed to discuss what we were going to do going forward and I needed to speak to Dave who was at work in Scotland. So on the next video I'll tell you more about which beams and what our decisions were next. Thanks guys, see you on the next one.